Good morning, afternoon, evening. Thanks for joining our workshop today. Uh, we have a couple great presenters for you, Jason Horton and Kevin Woodworth. We're going to discuss Z-Wave S2 encryption and enrollment. So while everybody's getting settled, uh, we'll take care of a little housekeeping. Uh, this session will be recorded and available on the Coolsys YouTube channel later today. Uh, please ask any questions you have in the chat function. And we'll be sure to answer them as quick as we can. So while we're at it, uh, feel free, drop your name in there and let us know where you're calling from or joining us from. And in the meantime, we have uh, just a couple quick poll questions, which I'm going to throw up on the screen now. And then uh, we'll be handing it off. So let's get that first one going. While we're doing that, Mark, why don't you uh, let us know where some folks are calling from while these polls are up on the screen? Sure. Looks like uh, Riverside, California. We've got uh, West Virginia, uh, Ohio, Baltimore. Hey, Douglas, I'm a Baltimore born and raised boy myself, uh, although I live out west now. Hi, Mary from Marietta. So it looks like we've got uh, a lot of folks who have found the Q&A section here. Romania, Virginia, Detroit, uh, Alabama, Calgary, Jeff Davison, Florida. Hey, Jeff, how have you been? We've got uh, another Romanian, Ontario, New York. Keep it coming. Everybody's finding the Q&A. And pretty impressive here. We have 90% for IQ2. That's what we like to see. That's exactly what we like to see. Minnesota, mm -hmm. Texas, Virginia. Got a bunch of folks from all over. As these polls are going in and folks are finding the Q&A, it's good to see everyone on the call. So yeah, roughly we got about 60% of folks are not familiar with the differences or sort of, we should say, between no and sort of, uh, familiar with the difference between S2 and S0 encryption. So that's you know, good thing that's what we're talking about today. So 94%, yeah, 94 yeah. do not uh, are not that familiar with the differences. So we got one more poll and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, get this going. This is fun to watch these polls come in for sure. Certainly is. Yeah. yeah, interesting. It looks like the majority have not. So this, yeah, this is going to be hopefully a productive uh, webinar. All right. Well, we're going to close these polls up. We promised everybody that we will uh, keep this as you know to 30 minutes or less. So I'm going to hand this over to Kevin and Jason. And again, if you have any questions, throw them into our chat, and we'll uh, we'll happily answer. So good luck. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Neil. Um, yeah, very interesting to see the polls. Um, looks like S2 is still relatively unfamiliar for the majority of you, so um, this should be a good one. Um, as, as Neil mentioned, you know, you've got that chat function, chat in your questions as we're going through this. Um, we'll open up at the end and, and answer some questions as well. Um, but as Neil mentioned, these, these are meant to be kind of short and sweet and to the point, and so hopefully these are, you know, uh, valuable. Hopefully these are useful for you guys. You know, in addition to questions, you know, chat in your feedback. If, if these are helpful or if you have any ideas for future webinars, uh, please feel free to, to chat that in and, and we'll uh, we'll take that into consideration. So with that being said, um, you know, obviously today we're going to talk about the S2 encryption. S2 is fairly new to the Z-Wave protocol, uh, but it's becoming more and more popular, right? More and more manufacturers are getting on board. They're implementing this new S2 security protocol. So you're going to start seeing this um, more and more on your installations. Um, so we wanted to take you through what is S2? You know, what do we get with S2? How does it work? Um, and then we'll actually demo um, what it looks like to pair an S2 capable Z-Wave device to the panel and kind of that process, right? So we'll take you through those uh, steps and then we'll open it up to some questions. So first and foremost, uh, you know, what is S2, right? What, what, what's the point of this? What is it? You know, what are the changes, right? So S2 is the latest and greatest in uh, Z-Wave security. Um, this is something that uh, hasn't been required on Z-Wave 500 series, which is uh, the majority of the devices that we're using today. 
um, but it is going to be required in the future with the new Z-Wave 700. So if you haven't ran into it, ran into this this new uh, you know secure enrollment process with these new S2 devices, you're going to right. It's going to become more and more popular. So some of the some of the key things to point out with S2 is we go to AES 128-bit encryption. So uh, very high encryption, uh, same same level of encryption we get with PowerG. A lot of you guys are familiar with that. Um, so we get quite uh, an improvement over SS0, which is where we're coming from. Um, and then along with that, we just, we just get more efficient devices. So improved battery life, we get improved range, and we get faster communication. Um, so today, uh, the IQ panel supports S2 um, if the panel is shipped on 2.4.2 software or higher. So let me, let me explain this for a little bit. So we implemented support for S2 um but only on new panels that are shipping on new on new software because there is a potential when you upgrade that that uh, z-way firmware that some of the devices would have to be repaired um so it uh any panel that comes out of the box on 2.4.2 or newer software will have support for uh s2 out of the box um which should be pretty much any new panel that you guys are getting today we've been shipping 242 now for you know what kevin a year now um so i'd be surprised if you're getting new panels out of box that aren't on 242 so Pretty much anything now is going to support S2. If you have an existing panel that um, didn't ship on 242 uh, and you want this new support for S2, uh, you can enter a patch tag here at the bottom of the, of the slide. Uh, Z-Wave 681 uh, is the patch tag, um, and that and, and so if you want to load this onto a test panel or your home panel and, and try out this new this new uh, security protocol, you can you can do that uh, by manually entering the patch tag. Keep in mind there is a potential that some of your devices may need to be um, cleared and, re and repaired, um, but uh, just know that really going forward, any panel out of the box that, that uh, you get should have support for this. So you're gonna start seeing this if you haven't uh, in the past. Anything to add to that, Kevin? Yeah, I was just gonna say, so you know, if you want to double check, again, like Jason said, you know, if you've got the panel on 242 or newer, it's gonna have it. There are very few circumstances where you would really want to or need to go back to an old panel and add support for S2. You can get it with a patch tag, um, but our recommendation is probably uh, only do that when needed um, or if you want to tinker. And then just take, uh, the, you know, the new panels have it already and you can kind of move forward with those. If you want to double check, you can go to the about section of the panel. So that's listed here on the screen. Jason's showing that. If you go into settings, advanced settings about, and you expand the Z-Wave section, you can actually look at your Z-Wave firmware version. And um, what you're looking for there is the 6.81. So that 6.81 firmware is what supported S2 encryption. And all this kind of flows through, right? So if you were to go back and look at the 242 technical service bulletin that we released, uh, you know, when that software released, it talks about S2 uh, capability and, uh, and how to get that. So anyway, pretty straightforward. Pretty much every panel you have at this point is S2 enabled or S2 capable. Um, so, but we do get a question once in a while. Someone will say, hey, I have a, an older 242 panel. It's acting different. It's not enrolling devices the same way as a new 242 panel. How come that is? And that typically deals with the actual Z-Wave firmware that was shipped on the panel. So. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, if you want it, you can have it. Uh, but going forward, pretty much any new panels are going to have it, right? Um, so with S2, uh, we get three different types of uh, encryptions, right? Within S2, um, we get S2 unauthenticated, S2 authenticated, and S2 access. Um, and really, the difference between these two is, or these three is, you know, low, medium, and high level of encryption, right? So um, a, a, a device that is uh, S2 capable will give you the option uh, most of the time to either enroll it as an authenticated device or not an unauthenticated device. An unauthenticated device isn't going to require this DSK number that we're going to talk about a lot here, and we're actually going to demo for you. Um, so that's not required for uh, a device that is un, as S2 unauth unauthenticated. So basically with S2, you get a two-factor authentication process, right? There's some internal encryption stuff that's happening in the background, and then there's this DSK number that you guys are going to manually enter. And again, we're going to talk about this. Um, so if you don't have the DSK or you can't find the DSK number, um, you know it's a, it's pre-installed, it's really old, whatever it is, um, you can enroll certain S2 devices as unauthenticated, and that DSK number is not going to be required. 
Other reasons you might use unauthent the unauthenticated option uh, for devices, as you can see in that, in that screen capture on the bottom left, we give you the option for certain devices to choose what level of encryption you want. The reason you, you might want to go with the unauthenticated version is if you're associating an S2 device with a non-S2 device. So a non-encrypted device can't control or speak to an encrypted device uh, for obvious reasons. So if I have an S2 light switch that needs to be associated to a, maybe a non-S2 capable light switch, I would want to make sure that I pair that in the unauthenticated mode. Uh, the authenticated mode is just that kind of next level up of encryption. It does require that two-factor authentication process, uh, again, which we're going to talk about. And then the next level up is your S2 access uh, level. And the encryption between S2 authenticated and S2 access actually doesn't change, uh, but the, the, some of the requirements with S2 access get a little bit more strict. So devices that fall into the S2 access control category are going to be entry devices like door locks and garage door controllers. And for those devices, that DSK, that two-factor authentication process is required. And if you don't have it, they're not going to function. Um, so again, it's really important that, uh, you know, for those devices that you go through this two-factor authentication process. So when you pair a device, as you can see on the screen capture here on the bottom, the panel is going to give you options, right? Depending on the device, depending on what that, what level of encryption that device supports, um, you're actually going to get the option to pair it either as an S0, if that device still supports S0 security, S2 authenticated, S2 unauthenticated. And then, of course, if it's an entry device, you're kind of stuck with the S2 access level of security, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, anything uh, to add there, Kevin, on that one? Yeah, no, I think it'll become a little more clear when we show you the real live demo here in just a few minutes. But the thing to remember here is that, um, you know, what pops up on the screen here is not something you can control. When the device actually pairs itself to the panel or as part of the pairing process, the device tells the panel, these are the types of encryption that I support. The panel will then populate that and you can choose to turn those on or off, but you're not actually gonna be able to control what shows up here as part of this pop-up. That's all determined by device firmware. And then from there, you may or may not have some options. And again, we'll, we'll show you that here in real time. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. Um, so this DSK number, what are, we, what are we talking to when we say DSK, right? DSK stands for device specific key. Um, basically what that is, is a unique 40 digit, uh, you know, every, every device that's S2 capable has a 40 digit uh, number associated to it. Um, and when you pair that device uh, to the panel, the panel is going to ask for that first five digits of number. And there's two ways that you can enter that, right? You can either enter it manually by using the keypad there on the screen that you can see to the right, um, or all of, the, all of these uh, DSK numbers will come with a QR code and you can scan that QR code using the panel camera. So the images on the bottom right, these are an, examples of what the DSK looks like. You have a QR code and then the full 40 digit, you know, DSK number next to it. The underlined first five digits is the number that we're looking for. That's the number that we want to enter. Um, and that's again, what kind of completes that secure enrollment process. Basically what this DSK number does is, an, is, is it's enabling the validation of the device identity and prevents what they call man in the middle impersonation attacks, right? Um, basically, you physically having to enter uh, this this the last part of this you know secure key uh, at the device at the time of pairing kind of prevents or kind of allows the controller uh, to validate that it's not communicating with an impersonating device, right? So um, any sort of you know uh, eavesdropping you know devices that are hacking you know these communications for for Z-Wave, uh, we kind of eliminate the, the ability for that to happen because you are physically you know finishing this process at the panel right it's not something that's being transferred over the air if you will um the dsk numbers can be found uh on the the box for these s2 capable devices um uh, or it can be found on the physical device itself actually both places so every box is going to have a dsk number and a qr code and then every device itself every physical device will have a sticker on it um, so on a new install, it should be easy, right? The DSK number, the QR code are going to be right in the box. But let's say you go back to do a service call. Um, maybe you're, you know, taking over another system, right? And that S2 device has been installed and the box is long gone. It's been, been in the trash for a year, right? Um, you can actually pull that device apart. If it's a door lock, you can have the door lock. There'll be a sticker with the DSK number. If it's a light switch, for example, you can pull that out of the, uh, out of the box and there'll be a sticker on the back of the light switch. So, um, you shouldn't ever not be able to get to the DSK. It might be a little annoying if you're pulling light switches out, but you should be able to always find the DSK number for that device. Um, and again, this is just that 
two-factor authentication process, right? It's 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 you manually uh, finishing that encryption process at the keypad uh, itself. Okay. Uh, anything uh, you care to hear, add here, Kevin? No, you said it. I was going to say that two-factor authentication piece. That's exactly the way I think about this. We're all used to this on websites and logins and other things that we do, banking apps and whatnot, where it sends you a code or you have to do some type of two-factor authentication to prove you are who you say you are. This is how the device proves uh, you know what it is and that you actually have physical access to the device and that something isn't trying to be spoofed during the learning process and then uh, create a vulnerability. So that's the perfect way to think about this, two-factor authentication. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, when pairing an S2 device, you're going to follow the same steps that you guys have always been following for Z-Wave. There's just this one extra step here, which is entering the, the DSK number. And we're actually going to demo that live for you. So Kevin has a live panel. I'm going to give him uh, uh, this, the, uh, the ability to present his uh, screen here and we'll actually take you through an actual, you know, pairing of a, of a Z-Wave S2 capable device. So let me give you... Um, let's see here. I already did it for you, Jason. Kevin's oh, great. You're on it, Neil. Thank you. All right. So I think you guys can see my panel screen here, hopefully. Um, and let me move this over a little bit. Okay, perfect. So we're going to walk you through how to pair an actual device here. Pretty straightforward, right? So I go into settings. I go to advanced settings. Type in my installer code. We go to installation. I go to devices. I go to Z-Wave devices. Now, again, uh, a couple of Z-Wave 101 things here. You know, for me, I always like to clear a device or exclude a device before I include a device. I happen to know that the device I'm working on is, is cleared already, um, but just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Um, we're gonna give you guys a sneak peek today of our new water valve that's coming. Um, we have an actual webinar coming up on this in a couple weeks. So we're gonna do a whole webinar about this, this retrofit water valve, um, but I'm gonna use it today because it supports S2 and we'll show you how it works. So again, just a best practice, I'm gonna clear the device, right? So once we clear it, we know we can include it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press include here. Now you notice here it picked up the actual um, encryption type. And remember, this is actually being broadcast by the device. So this device, it's backwards compatible to S0. So it supports S0, it supports S2 unauthenticated, and it supports S2 authenticated. In this case, we're gonna go with the top level of encryption. So you can just leave all these checked and we'll go ahead and hit okay. And this is where that second bit, that two-factor authentication comes in, right? So you can see that it's pre-filled out uh, the DSK here. It's filled out uh, almost all 40 digits. It's left off the first five digits, right? And again, here I've got my QR code, right? And again, these 40 digits will match. Also on the device itself, as Jason mentioned, it also has a QR code, right? So I can actually see this QR code on here with my with my uh, my DSK, my device specific key. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. And in this case, it is uh, 37800. And then I'll hit add DSK. And it's gonna go ahead and retrieve the configuration details here. And it will add it. All right, so this is a water valve. I'm going to go ahead and leave it that name. That is to network successfully. And it's that simple. Now, I do want to show you guys a couple other examples here of what happens if we turn some of that stuff off. So pretty straightforward. I'll show you an, show you an example of, turn, of not using the DSK or not using authenticated. And then I'm going to show you an example of using the QR code so you can kind of see the different ways of doing this. So in order to do that, we have to go back and we have to clear this device, right? So it's gone. Let's go ahead and add it again here. All right. Now, in this instance, let's pretend that for whatever reason, I didn't have access to the DSK. Maybe it was worn off the water valve. 
Maybe the box had been thrown away. Maybe for whatever reason, uh, you know, Jason talked about associating light switches to each other, S2 and non-S2 devices. So let's just say I, for whatever reason, I wanted to turn off S2 authentication. I can do that. And I'm gonna learn this in just as S2 unauthenticated, right? And essentially you're gonna notice it skips that whole DSK, that whole two-factor authentication section gets skipped and it follows a more normal, what you might be used to on a Z-Wave flow. So that's been added, okay? So let's go delete it one more time here. So we delete it again and let's go ahead and re-add it. And this time I'm gonna use the, oops. Let's back up, clear it one more time here. Oh, it wants to learn in. All right, well, let's go with that. So uh, what I wanna show you guys here is the actual camera. So again, you can, you can manually type in the first five digits or you can actually use the panel camera to scan this QR code. Now the panel camera can only read a QR code that's so small. This one happens to be big enough. I think that it will actually be able to be read by the camera. If it's too small, you can actually take a picture of this QR code with your smartphone, blow it up on your smartphone, and then just scan your smartphone. So let's go ahead and try this here. So I'll just scan that QR code, and you noticed it picked it up almost instantly. And it will go through and finish the process here. So the QR codes are definitely slick. Uh, again, you type in the first five digits of that DSK, or you scan the QR code. If the QR code's too small, go ahead and um, take a picture of it with your smartphone, and um, and then you can uh, uh, learn it in that way by blowing up the QR code so the camera can actually read that QR code. Hey, this Kevin, one. while we're while we're waiting, there was a great question that came in. What sure. happens if the DSK is entered incorrectly? I'm glad you brought that up. So we have had a few guys who get to the DSK stage. And uh, again, remember, it's the device that controls what type of encryption it supports. So let's say you were learning in a device that um, uh, didn't, so, you know, in this example, I was able to fall back to S2 unauthenticated or fall back to S0. Let's say it was a device that didn't support those and it required S2 authentication, right? Um, and you either fat fingered the DSK or maybe you didn't have the DSK. So let's say instead of typing in the correct DSK, you just typed in 1111 as part of that actual, uh, you know, first five digits of the DSK. In that example, it's going to let you continue adding the lock, but it's going to fail that two factor authentication. Um, so it will go through and it will physically add the device. The problem is, is that the device uh, then may or may not work properly, depending on what type of device it is. And typically you will actually see an error, especially in alarm.com, and it will say something like, you know, S2 authentication failed. Uh, and in that case, again, you might get erratic behavior from the device. It might not respond to commands correctly. Um, and so it can cause real problems if you, if you either try to fake it out by entering a wrong DSK purposefully, or if you fat finger a DSK and do it accidentally, you can start to have some real problems with your Z-Wave network. And again, you'll typically get an error, especially on the alarm.com side, letting you know that that's the case. And in that case, you would wanna go ahead and um, delete the device um, and then you know clear it and then re-add it. But that's a really good question, Mark. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Just to clarify, does Z-Wave Plus equal S2? No. No, so Z-Wave Plus is 500 series. And, um, you know, the IQ panel has always been a 500 series controller ever since day one. And, um, uh, but it hasn't always had S2. It was S0, right? So you can have S2 on 500 series, but 500 series does not necessarily mean it's S2 capable. And like Jason said, when we move to 700 series, which is everything's kind of in the works to head that direction, 
then that'll be a, a baseline standard. Every 700 series device will be required to support S2, but that's not the case today. So we're kind of get these mix matches depending on the devices and the firmware and the controllers and the panels. You may or may not have S2 capability depending on what you're doing. All right, and that failed, but I was kind of having some weird behavior there, so I kind of expected that. So I cleared this one more time here. Any other questions, Joel or Mark, while he's doing that? Uh, absolutely, guys. Thanks. And so there was one question that came in, and it was uh, from Ben. Thanks, Ben. Does authorization versus non-authorization pairing affect the devices that can be used for repeating? That's a good question. Um, I, I don't I don't think it does. I think I think the main difference between the two is if you're trying to get non-encrypted devices communicating to encrypted devices, right? So uh, again, if you have a non-S2 repeater, um, probably couldn't repeat an S2 device unless you had that device paired in in unauthenticated un unauthenticated mode, right? Uh, so I think that that still applies there. If it's a, if it's a non-S2 repeater, you got to go with the un unauthenticated uh, uh, encryption type. So that segues nicely into, you know, another question from Richie. You know, does does this require uh, a new device from us, or will Z-Wave and Z-Wave Plus devices still work? And and I believe you guys kind of answered that yes. You know, kind of as we presented. I just wanted to bring that up, and and um, so the new device would be the S2 encrypted device, but it doesn't necessarily require anything from the Qualsys panel side. Yeah, every you know our 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 Z-Wave daughter card is fully backwards compatible. Um, so when we're talking 500 series, right, we'll work with anything that's non-S2. We'll work with anything that is S2. Uh, and the same goes for 700 series. When we go to 700 series, which does require S2, uh, that the panel will still be able to communicate communicate with 500 series devices, either S2 or non-S2, right? So everything's fully backwards compatible. We're never going to drop support for you know older Z-Wave devices. Um, we'll just add support for the new stuff and the new security protocols that are coming down the road, right? Thank you. Hey, Jason. I'm here. Uh, and I think you said this earlier, but what, what panel version is required for the S2 support? So it's it's 242, 2.4.2, but it has to ship on 2.4.2. Uh, if you updated to 2.4.2, you're not getting support. And the reason is, is because, again, there was a potential for uh, devices needing to be cleared and repaired. So we didn't want to add in support for S2 and have all of your customers have Z-Wave devices you know, go into malfunction, right? So it's only supported on panels that ship on 242 or newer software, or uh, if you have a panel that was updated to 242, uh, if you want it, you have to enter that uh, that Z-Wave 681 patch tag. So 242 or higher shipped, if that makes sense. If, hopefully that makes sense. And here you guys see that working from the actual panel, right? So I'll close the water valve from the panel. And this of course could be tied to individual rules or water bugs, so it shuts automatically. You can control it remotely from the app, right? So pretty cool. And again, we're gonna do a whole webinar on this device, you guys, coming up. This is a, an MPI, a new product that's about to come out. And this is a retrofit water valve. So it mounts to any, just about any quarter turn ball valve. And it just clamps on in a matter of a, a few seconds. And it's, this device hap, happens to be Z-Wave 700 actually, and uh, supports S2 as you guys just saw, so. What other questions do we have? Mark, Joel, Neil? Uh, we just had a question coming in. Is uh, there any kind of alarm.com backup uh, that we expect for Z-Wave going forward? Yeah, so uh, I know that that's in the works. Uh, I don't have an exact update from alarm.com. We'll have to get that from them. But I know that they've been working on that for some time, um, uh, being able to back up and restore Z-Wave devices. Um, uh, as part of a, a panel swap or an upgrade or, or things like that, a 3G to LTE upgrade. So I don't have an update there today, but I do know that's uh, in the works and something that we're looking at closely. Yeah, the new the new Z-Wave devices are capable of that, right? Uh, I think before it was a, a limitation of the actual Z-Wave SDK, but with the new Z-Wave uh, 500 series or Smart Start, right? It's capable. I think we're just waiting for Alarm.com to finish their piece. So should be should be coming here pretty quick. 
Yeah. And, you know, not to get too off topic, we're not really talking about Smart Start today, but there is something very similarly related to these QR codes and to S2 security called Smart Start, right? Which allows us to actually, again, scan a QR code. And, and this probably won't work because I already have this device learning in this panel. But, you know, I can scan this QR code without having the device pair, uh, paired. Here you see the DSK, right? Uh, you see the water valve. Basically, oh, this one's already about to do this here. Let's do that. Anyway, Smart Start's really cool because it allows you to actually prepare a panel and a device without them actually having to find each other over the air, like a normal inclusion process. And then when you would plug that device in, it would be able to just start talk, it would just start talking to the panel automatically, right? So S2 is kind of, I mean, uh, Smart Start, we're not spending a lot of time on today, but it's very closely related to the implementation with S2. So we're going we're gonna to wrap this up momentarily, but we have, do have one more question. And since you've got your panel up, I think this would be a great one. Uh, someone would like to see the uh, Z-Wave firmware version on the About page just to show where uh, people can look for that. Sure, you bet. So I'll go all the way home so you can see it from here. So we'll go into Settings. We'll go to Advanced Settings. Type in our code. And up here on the top, you've got about. And this is a great, you know, we've got a lot of really good information in here, battery, software, right? You can see I'm running a version that's not yet released. <laughs> this is 260, this is coming soon, you guys. Uh, different specs here, but if I go over here to Z-Wave, I can look at the actual uh, Z-Wave firmware version right there. So it's 6.81 is what you're looking for. Uh, I think the version before this was 6.54, I think. Um, but 6.81 is the Z-Wave version that supports S2 security. Again, any panel that shipped from the factory was 242 or higher, which is everything for like about the last year, um, is going to have that version preloaded on there. Unless you're running into older stock or going back to an existing panel, you may have the older Z-Wave SDK, in which case you can go to Upgrade Software. Go to patch tag, type in Z-Wave 681, and go get that. And mine says no updates available because I already have it, right? But you could go get that, that SDK if you want. But again, as Jason warned, um, you know, let's say you had 20 devices already learned in on S0 on the old SDK, and now you want to update to the new Z-Wave SDK it technically can be done, but it can cause some issues such that, you know, we recommend if you're going to update the Z-Wave firmware, you should, uh, you know, delete your network and start over, clear all your devices and start over if you want to have, you know, be really sure that they got included on that new, on that new version and we'll have no problems. So we don't have a lot of people upgrading old panels to the new SDK. You know, they're out there, they're working. Um, and uh, if they have a new panel out of box with that SDK already there, then they get the benefits of that. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for, uh, for your presentation. I think it was uh, definitely engaging for the audience and for everybody else. We will see you next week for our uh, next week is the top 10 uh, IQ2 tech support questions. So hope to see everybody next week. And thanks again, everybody, for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks for attending, everybody. Any unanswered questions, we'll get to you offline. Thanks. Yeah, or if anything pops up later, you know, reach out to tech support. We'll get those answered.